bring in retired Colonel Mark Cantian, who served three decades in the U.S. Marine Corps, including two Iraqi tours. He's a senior advisor for the Center for Strategic and International Studies International Security Program. Uh, Colonel, a privilege to have you on the show this morning. I wanted to start off just with these preliminary reports suggesting that this deadly drone was mistaken for a U.S. one. I mean, from your experience, how does a mistake like that happen? Is it human error, computer glitch, or, or something else entirely? No, what would have happened was some sort of uh, human error. Uh, the radars that were looking for uh, targets in the sky uh, saw one, and they knew that there was a U.S. drone coming in, so the operator assumed that this target that they saw was a U.S. drone, uh, and the drones probably go at the same speed. They probably look pretty similar on the radar return. So they assumed that this was one of ours. Tragically, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it was a lethal mistake. From your experience, is it an understandable mistake, sir? Well, I'm sure that they'll work on the uh, training of the operators, the work on their scheduling to make sure this doesn't happen again. But, you know, war is a complicated uh, activity and mm -hmm. things happen and this this is not uh, surprising it's not out, really out of the ordinary okay uh, and as you know president biden promised to retaliate against those who are responsible but it's now been 48 hours since that deadly attack we've yet to see a military response what options behind the scenes are really being weighed right now and is it a red flag to you that we haven't seen any retaliation at this time it's not a red flag because the administration is considering a wide variety of uh, targets. Uh, there are targets in different countries. There are different kinds of targets. So that's not surprising. They've said that they're going to retaliate, and I'm sure we'll we'll see that. Uh, the tricky part for the administration is to strike back forcefully to make the point that these kinds of attacks will not be tolerated without at the same time expanding the conflict, which has been one of Iran's uh, goals uh, in uh, supporting these attacks, and, and, and also not to get U.S. forces too involved in the conflict. Uh, the United States is trying to avoid making this a U.S. and Israel conflict against the Arab world. What do you think that appropriate response would look like? You know, obviously, the United States doesn't want war. We don't want conflict. But did we reach a point this weekend where direct conflict with Iran is now necessary? I think it's extremely unlikely that we'll have a direct conflict with Iran. Iran works through surrogates, and that's what we're seeing here. I think our strikes will be back against surrogates. Uh, we saw that in the Red Sea, where we attacked the Houthis, which are uh, Iranian surrogates. Uh, we'll see uh, those kinds of attacks. I think the big question is where the attacks come. Will they be in uh, Syria? Almost certainly. Will they be in Iraq, which has been very uncomfortable about U.S. attacks? Will it be in the broader region? Will it include the, the Houthis? And also, will it include Iranian troops that are outside of um, uh, Iran? Uh, the Iranians have a lot of advisors, and the United States may decide to go after that. Yeah, the, and this weekend's attack obviously added fuel to the fire with the tensions we've already been experiencing for the past three months. Lastly, Colonel, how do you see this impacting Israel's war against Hamas? You know, obviously, the U.S. has been Israel's biggest ally, offering our support in a myriad of different ways, going back and forth, trying to broker uh, some sort of peace deal, especially as it pertains to the hostages. But does this weekend's attack change our focus from Israel to now protecting our own? I don't think it's going to change our uh, focus on Israel. Israel doesn't really need much help from the United States. It needs some supplies, but uh, it, it's able to conduct its war on its own. I think the big challenge for the United States is uh, to push back without getting uh, drawn in it itself. All right. Well, uh, unfortunately, we have to end it there. But as always, Colonel Mark Kantian, thank you for your time this morning. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.